every time you hear that thing, we'll improve it for the next one. I was like, that's no good. You spent how much time, company resource, you know, marketing resource doing this for me, knowing that I'm gonna pick this up. So hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, you're gonna find out the difference between a GCN paid editorial and an actual bike review on the Yolio G21 Gravel Monster. Now, if you haven't checked out the build log video, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but that video went into all the small parts of engineering, the QC, the tolerances and stuff, and some of the part choices that I built it up with. That This is more of a final ride review, and I'm also gonna chat a little bit about the classified rear hub system, but that's gonna have its own video because it's quite detailed and very, very geeky, that one. So. This is obviously a custom paint job. I didn't really talk about it in the last video, but I teased it with the intro, the Rothmans Rally theme. Why the Rothmans Rally theme? Well, let's get rid of that pink bottle because that doesn't go. This is a nod and a bit of a thanks to Peak Talk's mum because from the ages of about 10 to 16, pretty much every weekend, she sat in a drizzly car park waiting for me to go mountain biking, taking me downhill mountain biking, sitting in all sorts of rainy and shit weather and not even complaining. So thanks, mum. Now, during the early 80s and through to the 90s, my mum was working for Rothman's rally team and she was semi-responsible for dealing with the rally team sponsorship. So that went from the early 80s with Ari Vartanen, who won the Drivers World Championship actually as a privateer. So that Ford Escort in the Rothmans colours was actually not a factory works car. And then they went all the way through 80s up to the early 90s with the late Colin McRae in the Subaru Legacy, believe it or not. So my mum always mentions uh, her Rothmans rally days as like a happy time in her life. We both love the outdoors. We both love forests, gravel, rallying. The gravel bike and rally car thing, they kind of go hand in hand. You know, you've got a bit of road stage to get to the fun stuff, the gravel stuff, and then you go hell for leather when you're off road. So it's kind of similar to a gravel bike and I thought what better paint scheme for the bike than to have an actual Rothmans bike now originally I thought they were just reaching out to me for kind of like a marketing purpose to say you can have custom paint for a YouTube special but actually they offer it to anyone for about 300 USD now if you know anything about custom painting whether it's bikes or cars or whatever it's seriously difficult um, it's a long process there's lots of preparation to get a good result and 300 US dollars is very very cheap for a custom paint job so it's really really cool that they offered that and the speed at which they turned this around was mind-blowing actually for me creating a basic PDF on the iPad sent it to them they approved it did it in Illustrator and gave me a final kind of 2d view of all sides and they'll do that for anyone so I think that's really really cool so that's the story behind the paint job so moving on to the actual ride of this bike how does it go well I've been riding it for about six weeks five six weeks now and it is a bit of a love-hate and I'm going to mention the bad things because GCN had this on their channel where they did some sort of mega bikepacking video, which was really cool, but they didn't actually talk about the really frustrating points of the bike. Now, in terms of the little features that you'd normally get pissed off with on a bike, like the bottom bracket creaking, the brakes not being faced or perpendicular to the discs, or the headset being difficult to preload, all of those problems don't exist on this bike. In terms of the engineering, this bike is very, very, very well done. Um, say what you like about T47 bottom brackets, it's, it's a bit stupid that we're now bonding a shell into a carbon frame because we couldn't make the whole round. It's a massive piece of aluminium, it does add quite a lot of extra weight, it's not anodized, so there will be over time, there will be galvanic corrosion between the aluminium and the carbon. It is a messy solution, I don't like bonded in threaded bottom brackets. Anyway, let's get past that, this is what this bike comes with. I've got a T47 bottom bracket in there made by Hambini. really, really good piece of machining. However, the T47 is not easy for people to get right because it doesn't leave much width outside of the frame to actually put a tool on to turn it and tighten it. The other problem is the paint keep out area is too close to the shell. So when you tighten those you know, lobes on the bottom bracket, even though the Hambini ones are very, very small, some of the smallest out there, they scuff up the lovely paint job on the frame, which is really, really, really annoying. And I've relayed all these problems to, to Yolio um, and they will improve it, I'm sure. Headset, thought it was gonna be a bit difficult to preload this because obviously an integrated era handlebar really don't see the point of that on a gravel bike for what i'm gonna do with this gravel bike it's gonna be more towards the mountain bike spectrum sort of more technical gnarly stuff i ain't gonna be needing an aero handlebar if you're buying a gravel bike for the sort of faster lighter gravel type stuff more like the road stuff then maybe you're looking towards aerodynamics but for me i'm not going to use it for that kind of stuff but having said that very easy to preload and absolutely no creaks or knocks from the headset Normally, sometimes when you've got a headset like this with the split spaces and four big cables coming up, so I'm running mechanical and hydro on both sides, so I've got four big cables, it's really hard to actually press the stem down onto the top bearing and get that preload. Actually, it wasn't too bad with this. It took a couple of goes after riding it and everything bedded in a bit to add a bit more preload, but now it's sorted. Seat post, 
a bit annoying. I'd like to be able to run a dropper seat post on here. Like I said, I'm gonna be using this for the sort of tougher end of gravel. It's a proprietary D set seat post and I can't fit a dropper post. I can't even fit a round post. And the thing I really don't like is this single bolt arrangement up here for the pitch adjustment. They always, always slip. If you hit a bump big enough and you're in the saddle, the saddle can slip. Now it hasn't been too bad on this, but a simple two bolt threaded adjuster with the infinite pitch adjustment cannot move because those bolts are always in tension. That pitch cannot move. That is just the simplest and best way and lightest way to do it. The good thing about this one though is it offers quite a lot of fore and aft uh, positional change, but that makes the, this part of the seat post really, really long and quite ugly. So I don't really like that where you can consider aerodynamics. Maybe this is slightly better, but for me, a dropper would be better. Um, it's very, very stiff owing to the quite chunky down tube and the T47 brought and back it. The ride response when you're pedaling is, is very good. It's very stiff. The power transfer feels even 35 PSR in quite a skinny tire. I can get the rear wheel just spinning quite easily when I'm stood up on, on loose gravel. Um, which is a little bit annoying. There's odd, odd wheels on here. This is the Yolio kind of gravel wheel, which is, I think is 25 mil internal. And then on the back, I've got the classified because I'm going to show you that in a minute. I've rooted the uh, button quite cleverly. So it's just there where my thumb is. It doesn't get in the way at all in, unless I want it. And it's quite a good position now. Classified don't recommend that, but it's just the best place I've found for it. And I've stuck that on with 3M VHB backed tape and it's working really well. And all the cable is underneath the, the tape here. Now let's go on to the gearing because this is what makes this bike an absolute monster. And this is my apocalypse bike for when the zombies come and the world is about to end. If I have to grab one bike, it's going to be this one because it's got 44 gear ratios, completely pointless. But when I built this bike up, it wasn't confirmed whether I was going to get my hands on the classified rear hub. I was still talking to them, still trying to blag one, but we've got one now. But by the time I'd actually got it, I've already put the double chain rings on the front. I've already put the front mech on there. So I thought, well, instead of just going to one bike, let's just use the classified and the two by and now i've got 44 possible gear ratios now there's probably some overlap in those ratios but with this setup the 50 34 on the front and 1134 on the back and the classified rear hub i believe i've got the biggest gear range ratio bike that you can buy so i've calculated i think it's about 640 percent or something and that makes it more than the biggest range on a sram eagle mountain bike set so amazing spread of gears that I've got hold of this. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna use all of those. I don't actually need to use the big chain ring now most of the time, but it's nice to know that if I put some road wheels on here, I've got the big chain ring mode as well, and then I've got the classified rear hub as well. So this is just a conquer all setup. Now, massively overkill, but when you consider that this is a Dura Ace mechanical mech, it weighs about as much as a fart and a cable and a shifter. It really doesn't make a difference. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I think, why would I bother buying gravel specific cranks and stuff when I just don't need to. Um, the classified rear hub, like I said, I'll talk about that in a different video. It's absolutely mega. Functionally, it's mega. Like, I can't fault it. Commercially, of course, it's, it's, it's a right mess. It's an inventory mess, a logistics mess. They ship, you know, hundreds of parts with it. So they ship to me what would be actually sent to a dealer. Um, so most customers wouldn't be able to get that build process themselves actually and they'd have to go through a shop which is a bit annoying if you're quite techy and you like this kind of stuff which you are because you're watching this video that's quite annoying but yeah i've got some really old uh spds on there that i've had for about 15 years they're a bit loose and they're lethal because they just clip out when you don't want them to on the rough stuff but yeah um really ugly lizard skins bar tape but it's 3.2 it's the dsp one the thickest one and it's so comfy it's a horrible color, but it was cheap, so I don't care. Now, in the last video you've just seen, I had 2.35 inch mountain bike tires on it. I had a hands damp front and rear, and then I switched to a racing Ralph on the back because the hands damp didn't really fit. Now, as you can see, I've gone something a little bit more sensible. These are still mountain bike tires. I refuse to buy gravel tires because they're more expensive. These are mountain bike Continental Cross Kings. I actually meant to get the Race Kings, the Tom Pidcock ones, but when I clicked add to basket, I picked the wrong ones. It must've been late and I must've been tired. They're a bit more knobbly. They are a little bit slower on tarmac, but in the mud and sort of moss and stuff, they're, they're pretty good. A little bit uh, bitier than the, the Race Kings. Now, these are in a 29 2.0, so they're still a mountain bike tyre because they're rated in inches, not millimetres, but they measure up as 49 millimetres when they're pressured, so about, about right. And I think Yolio specify 50, 51 or 53 max for this frame, so they absolutely should fit. Now, it was all going so well, wasn't it? The classified rear hub, the custom paint, the chunky tires, the monster theme, the 44 gear ratios. This is the only bike I've ever had where I've got toe overlap. Yeah, I'm six foot four and a half, toe overlap on an off-road bike. Absolutely unforgivable. This whole build has been undone by something seriously elementary 
and really quite fucking annoying. They've done all the difficult bits right. All the production in QC has been pretty much spot on. That's it, you heard me right. Toe overlap on a 58 centimeter off-road bike. I've never had toe overlap on my road bike. Now the front center of this bike is shorter than my TCR. Now that is mental, isn't it? Now my TCR is a snappy short wheelbase road bike. How can this front end be shorter when this is supposed to be going off-road? So when I first built this up, okay, I had quite a big front tire on it. I rode it out of the car park and I nearly went over the bars. My foot was so overlapped over the front wheel, it stopped dead and I nearly fell off. So I thought, oh, maybe I'm pushing it with this massive chunky tire on the front, but it fit. So I got in touch with Yoli and they said, yeah, try going down to a 45 millimeter tire. So I thought, well, that's fine. But you did say 51 or 53 could fit. So I tried these, obviously, uh, 49 millimeter tires. Still get massive tire overlap. Basically can't ride this bike off off-road anything really tight and twisty and technical which is what i want to do with it i want to be able to do what i can do on my hardtail and it's just comical and i was dropping a clip here i even tried it with a road front tire a 28 millimeter conti gp5000 a road wheel toe overlap now not being funny but tall people do not get toe overlap it's it's just a non-issue right really short excuse me really short riders on smaller frames on short road bikes can get a bit of toe overlap, but I've never had a problem. Now this should be longer than a road bike. It should be more stable in the front end. It should have a longer front center. And the fact that I'm getting toe overlap with a road front wheel is just exacerbated when I put a bigger tire on it. I basically can't turn the handlebars more than about 10 degrees. And if I'm going out riding on a road, that's not really a problem. But if I'm riding tight, you know, technical switchback climbs, it's just impossible to ride. And it's such a shame because they've given me one of the most special bikes I've ever had, honestly. In terms of you know the the connection to my mother the paint job the rally theme and you know the classified rear wheel all these cool bits and it's just undone by something so simple as geometry the very first thing the designer does when they make a new bike consider the geometry now i've looked on the geometry chart the smaller sizes which there are a lot more smaller people in asia than me they don't seem too bad they've got a a longer basically a longer front end because the head the head tube angle is a lot slacker so it pushes that front wheel away for some re really weird reason anything above the 56 the head angle gets a lot steeper and the front wheels coming back towards you and there's no different offset on the fork they use the same fork offset across all of the sizes which is a bit cheeky and they shouldn't really be doing that and i just don't think i honestly can't i don't know how this has happened have they not had any 58 sold ever and no one's come back but you know look look how close that pedal is to the tire now, you can't just say, oh, Pete, you're a big guy, you've got big feet. Well, yes, I have got big feet, but not on this channel. We're not talking about that. I shouldn't get toe overlap. <laughs> this front wheel should be way, way out in front. And, and you feel it. When you're riding this bike downhill and you're stood up and you're holding onto the hoods, you do feel so over the front wheel. It doesn't feel very stable. It feels like as soon as you hit a root or a rock like that, it can very easily pitch over. And it's just because the front of the bike's too short. <sighs> Ran over. But yeah, yeah. Um, I immediately got back to Yolio about this and you never know, you never know with these kind of companies, it's a bit sort of chabador, but it's, they said, you know, they, they're aware of it, they're going to improve it for the next one and that's, every time you hear that thing, we'll improve it for the next one, I was like, that's no fucking good, you spent how much time, company resource, you know, marketing resource, doing this for me, knowing that I'm going to pick this up. Do you think I'm just going to not ride it? I mean, yeah, loads of YouTubers don't ride their shit they get sent. And they'll put out, you know, commission for it or affiliate links or whatever. But they've got to improve this. Hopefully when they build the new batch of frames, they can send me a longer fork. Because I can't change the head tube angle. But they have said for the new one, they're going to change the head tube angle. But I really, really hope when they do a new one, they can send me it and I can love this bike. Because the little parts and the, the QC and, and it is pretty good. And it could be amazing. And I love the fact that you can fit absolutely huge tyres in it. And I want to be able to ride an enduro tyre on it. I want to be able to do crazy things on it. It's a fucking gravel bike. It doesn't need to exist. So why shouldn't I be able to just make it stupid? But I'm just going to ride my hardtail. Because that won't throw me over the bars if I... Well, I don't get toe overlap. <laughs> but anyway. Yolio, you nearly did it perfectly. It's not even the execution, it's like the first step on the, on the geometry chart. Make sure it works. Don't make it shorter than a road bike. Just to satisfy the trolls out there. Look, that's about an inch and a half of overlap. I can't turn the handlebars. 
Now that's lethal when you're riding down some technical stuff. And you're gonna say, oh, you shouldn't ride it down technical stuff, Pete Talk. That's not what a gravel bike's for. Well, it fucking is. Uh, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't want to take the hardtail the whole time. I should be able to use this on anything and set, like, and bloody hell, turning out of a fucking junction on the road, that's dangerous. So it's not about the type of trail that I'm riding on. Anyway, ran over. That's been the earlier G21. G21. It's not quite there in the bigger sizes. The smaller sizes, I don't think this is a problem. I've spoken to some others that have got this in smaller sizes and it's not a problem. But yeah, GCN didn't mention this. They didn't mention anything, did they? But uh, cheers and I'll see you in the next one.